there it lay, just out of reach. The Dagger of Time. There was a treasure I could carry with pride as a trophy of our victory. If I could only get there. Time to get out. Now. I have brought us honor and glory. <coughs> Your Majesty, you promised me my choice of the Maharaja's treasures. That dagger! Surely you won't deny the lad a souvenir of his first battle. You may have your choice of all the Maharaja's other treasures. 
Except that hourglass. That will make a fine gift for the Sultan of Azad when we pass through his city. And some exotic animals for his menagerie. And a few dozen slave girls. Yes, that should be enough. I want no animals or maidens harmed until I have chosen. Let it be known, King Sharaman is merciful in victory. Trust not a man who has betrayed his master, nor take him into your own service, lest he betray you too. I learned the truth of this to my sorrow, the day that we arrived in Azad as the Sultan's honored guests. My friend! My friend, your visit brings joy and honor to my poor and humble dwelling. If only you had given me time to prepare a proper welcome. The glories of Azad are famed throughout the world. And yet, the best is yet to come. I give you the sands of time. May the friendship between our kingdoms endure as long as time itself. The sand, why does it glow? I can tell you. Inside the hourglass is a marvel that no living man has seen. Alas, only the dagger can unlock the sands of time, and it belongs to a greater one than I. A young prince, dearer to his father than all the wealth of India. Perhaps he will oblige. <sighs> struck them down, they rose to fight again. I soon realized that only by taking into my own dagger the sands that possessed them could I liberate them from their monstrous living death. 